It's Mike from Party for Crafts back again. These glasses can only mean one thing. I'm sitting in front of a fiber laser. It's been a while now. People have been asking me to review a fiber laser. I've reviewed diode lasers and several CO2 lasers, often comparing them to Glowforge. This is a fiber laser, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what fiber lasers are, what they do, how they're different than a CO2 laser, and why somebody would want to get one. And then I'll do some more how-to videos later. This will be more of an informational video. Show a couple little demos of it working and talk a little bit about the software. I was going to do um, an unboxing and um, putting it all together video, but it really is as simple as there was one wiring harness that had to be put together and four bolts that had to be put, put in. That was it. That's all there was to it. Uh, installed some software and I was ready to go. It does come with EasyCAD software, but most people use Lightburn, the Galvo version of Lightburn, which is a small upgrade to an existing Lightburn. If you have a CO2 laser for I think it's $30, you can add Galvo to it. I will be showing you Lightburn when I do my demonstrations. I started out in EasyCAD, but you cannot have EasyCAD 2 and Lightburn both installed on your computer at the same time. So I decided to use Lightburn and I had to remove EasyCAD 2 from my computer before I could do that. Either one of them will work. They'll both work just fine running it. Um, but I use Lightburn on my big 100 watt laser. So I'm already um, fairly familiar with it. So I'm going to use Lightburn on this laser as well. So what did I mean when I said that you get the Galvo version of Lightburn? What is a Galvo laser? Well, with CO2 gantry lasers, you have a head that moves back and forth. And it's really limited in how fast it can move back and forth by its weight and the belts and the, the type of motors that it's using. All of those things limit how fast it can move. A Galvo laser has two mirrors and the laser bounces off one mirror and then off the other mirror and then down onto the workpiece. And then all it has to move is these lasers move around and they bounce the laser beam around. And these lasers can move around a lot faster than a head can move back and forth. So Galvo type lasers like this fiber laser from Hao Tian, this fiber laser is a Galvo type laser that has the mirrors in the top. The negative with it is the mirrors have a limited range. So until you get into the really industrial size, you have kind of a small area that you can engrave and cut in. With this one, uh, it's 150 millimeters or approximately six inches by six inches is about the size that you can do. Fiber lasers versus CO2, the big difference is fiber lasers can engrave metal. They can engrave into metal and they can cut really thin metals like foils and maybe a little bit thicker than foil, but they can engrave into metal as opposed to CO2 lasers, which can't touch metal unless you put a spray on it and then it can mark it black. But these fiber lasers, they can burn the coating off of a powder coated metal like this, or they can engrave into the metal itself. Uh, you can, by changing the, the power and the speed settings, you can get it to come out either white or gray or close to black, depending on the, the settings that you choose. So the speed and the ability to engrave metal are the two really big advantages of a fiber laser. It's also pretty portable. Um, this one's a, a little bit heavy. It's maybe as it stands right now, maybe 45, 50 pounds. I think the crate that it came in with everything uh, was around 150 pounds. So they could be taken to a craft show or something like that to engrave tumblers right there, custom tumblers engraved as they sit and wait for it. The one that I got does come with a rotary. and The rotary would go right here on this platform and this platform is filled with threaded holes. You can bolt the rotary down to it or you can bolt handles down that will hold things in place. 
So that uh, that's a nice solid surface. This is really thick, solid metal that you can uh, put those things on. I'll show you what the rotary looks like here. This is called a chuck rotary. This device in the front is called a chuck. And you put a tool in and turn it, and these open and close <clears throat> to hold on to tumblers or wine glasses or pencils, whatever the case may be. The other kind is the one that has two long wheels at the bottom and the wheels rotate and spin it around. Those are called roller rotaries. They each have their place. Roller rotaries are, are cheaper. Chuck rotaries are stronger and more solid and they're better at things like handles. You couldn't do a coffee mug really on a, on a rotary because the coffee mug handle will hit the long wheels where with the chuck rotary you could spin it 360 degrees and it will be just fine. So in a future video, I'll show you how the rotary works and what we can do with it. There are some negatives to the fiber laser as well. As you can see, there's no exhaust. You would have to come up with some kind of exhaust yourself to do that. Most people don't do a lot of wood and acrylic with their fiber laser. They do mostly metal and powder coated metal. So there's not a lot of smoke given off. But I could tell you, even when engraving metal and powder coating, you can smell it and kind of taste the metal in the air as well. So I'm going to test it later and see if just a shop back is suitable for exhaust. If not, get a cloud line um, external fan, put a hose here. We can clamp it down with um, the holes on the, the top of the, the plate and get some exhaust going. But if you're going to do anything that smokes, you would absolutely um, have to get some kind of exhaust system or an enclosure around it with exhaust going in. You always have to wear your glasses because this is not enclosed and the laser could bounce off of something and get, get in your eye and you wouldn't want that. So I often, um, I'll have my, my glasses on and I'll stack some things around it just to make sure nobody else walks by and gets hit by a laser beam either. The fact that you can engrave and cut metal means that the laser is being absorbed by that metal. It's a different frequency than visible light, so it gets absorbed and reflected by things differently than the light that we see every day bouncing off of a mirror. So metal absorbs it, and that's why it can engrave and, and cut metal. So you don't have to really worry about the laser beam bouncing off of the metal itself, but it could bounce off of other materials that do reflect this frequency of light. So I'm looking forward to showing you how this, this Houtian fiber laser, this is a 30 watt fiber laser. They go anywhere from 10 watts, 20 watts, up to 100 watts before you start getting into really commercial fiber lasers that are huge and can cut thicker metal. Um, I look forward to showing you how it works and demonstrating things to you in the comments. Please tell me what would you like to know about this fiber laser? What would you like to see if it can or can't do? What would you like to learn how to do on it? Uh, and it's, so far, it, it's been pretty simple. I've done a bunch of tests to uh, figure it out, get it all, all aligned, and that one didn't have anything. Um, to get it aligned and, and ready to go. And I'll show you how I did that in a, a future video. So in the comments or uh, where I post this video on Facebook, let me know what do you want to see this How Tian laser do and what do you want to know about it. If you're interested in getting yourself a fiber laser, I'll put a link to the website where this one came from down in the description. And inside of this box is the laser source that goes up through fiber optics and then down through the, the Galvo head. They do have different laser sources and different wattage of lasers available. This one is a JPT source. Um, that's the, the brand name. JPT is the brand name that makes the laser source. And there are other laser sources like Rakus that are available uh, when you get them. And there's also different wattages. I think they offer 30 and 50 watts in this package and in this kind of mini fiber laser. All right, I'll see you on the next video.